Hey guys, welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be talking about how your personal statement and SAQ are used in your interviews and what sort of questions you can expect to be asked based upon your studies in year 12 and what you've done so far in year 13. I'd just like to shout out medify.co.uk very quickly for making this video possible. Make sure to go and check out their fantastic resources. So, personal statement and SAQ. The personal statement. You would have submitted this quite a while ago now and in this you would have talked about a variety of experiences you've had, your reasons for studying medicine, books you've read, articles you've read, journals you've read, pretty much everything that you've done so far that shows your motivation to study medicine. Your SAQ, that small form you filled after your application was sent off to talk about further interests that you have and to also outline why you'd like to study here at Cambridge. Now, from my experience, I wasn't asked any questions from my personal statement or SAQ in my interviews because I'd heard from friends in the years above that at you know, whichever college they had applied to, that they had been asked questions about their personal statement. So having heard this, of course, I prepared quite a lot of my personal statement, analysing my personal statement extremely thoroughly, even coming up with questions myself about what I'd ask if I had been given that personal statement as an interviewer. So although I didn't get asked any questions from my personal statement, I'd still recommend that you do read your personal statement again a few times and prepare just in case you do get asked. Because you need to remember that different colleges will interview in different ways and will have different questions. Now, of course, interviews will have a variety of questions that they've prepared that they want to ask candidates. Now, these set questions will be asked to all candidates to try and differentiate, to try and help them differentiate candidates. But you need to realize to try and get to know you a tiny bit more and to hear more about your experiences, interviewers may look at something from your personal statement and ask you more about it. Particularly, they might ask you about an experience you've had. They might ask you to elaborate. They might ask you how a certain activity you've done, for example, playing a musical instrument or playing a certain sport, has helped you develop certain skills, which may help you be a better doctor in the future. So what you need to remember is that when it comes to your personal statement, if they do ask questions about it, they don't want you to just repeat what's on your personal statement. They want you to think about this experience and elaborate more on it. They will actually be interested in what you've written. So what's really important is that you're able to speak about pretty much everything you've written on your personal statement. For example, if you mention volunteering, don't be surprised if in an interview, particularly a clinical interview, they ask you about communication skills that you developed whilst volunteering. You might want to talk about communicating through means other than simple verbal communication. You might have a variety of things that you want to mention. So what's important is that you sit down with your personal statement and analyze it like a text and sort of think about different ideas and maybe annotate it. So what's key is that you sit down and think about different ideas and different things that you could talk about as opposed to memorizing answers to questions that you've kind of thought of before. But the best way to go about it is to think of key concepts, key ideas and key things that you remember from that experience. When you do answer a question you can pretty much I guess improvise and make it up on the spot but you'll have loads of different interesting things that come together when you are answering. So your SAQ, how is that used? So on the SAQ, they explicitly ask for your interests in science and for why you think the Cambridge course will suit you. So of course, most people's SAQs will be quite scientific. Similar to my personal statement, I personally was not asked about my SAQ in the interview. But you need to remember that that was just one year of interviews at Jesus College. And firstly, interviews change year upon year, but also interviews are different amongst different colleges. So like you analyze your personal statement, analyze your SAQ. With your SAQ, think of different ideas about things you've mentioned in it. For example, let's say that you've read The Lancet every week for the last few months, or let's say that you've read the student BMJ. If they pick up on this, they're likely to ask you about an article that you've read recently. So make sure you have two or three articles that you've found interesting, that you've read over the last few months, that you can comfortably talk about. Of course, you don't need to go into the intricate details of this article. The interviewer simply wants to hear what the article was about and what you found interesting. And you might want to have a few thoughtful comments about it. So, in particular, for books, journals and all these scientific things that you may have read, try and note down a few main points that you picked up from that so that in the interview you don't fluster and you've got some key solid examples that you can drop in when answering. The trick is to think of ideas and to think of examples not to memorize answers in preparation for interviews. Now, for those of you who've watched the recent mock interview for medicine that I uploaded, you might be wondering why I was asking the mock interviewee to draw a structure of the brain and to um, explain its function. Now, what you need to remember is that when you get to these really complicated questions, the 
interviewer will ask you these questions based on stuff you've mentioned before. For example, Joe in that video had mentioned that his sister had her corpus callosum cut in half. Now since he's voluntarily mentioned the brain, it is fair for the interviewer to assume that he's interested in the brain and for him to maybe explain how the brain works. And so that question was relevant in that situation. Now if you look at Joe's diagram in the interview, his diagram wasn't overcomplicated, it was very simple, it was very basic. And to, be, and to be fair, is oversimplified. There are only three main sections of the brain. And this is fine in the interview because at a Cambridge interview, they don't expect you to know everything. They don't want you to know everything before you come to Cambridge. They want you to come to Cambridge and then learn stuff. So first and foremost, if they ask you these extended questions from something you've mentioned before, don't worry about all the nitty gritty details. Now, you need to remember that at most colleges at Cambridge University, the medical interviewers aren't trying to confuse you. They will be asking questions which you can work out the answer to using existing knowledge from your A-levels. For example, when I applied to Jesus, the questions I got were based purely off AS biology and AS chemistry, not even A2 level chemistry. So it's clear that what they were trying to do was to get me to use stuff I'd learned, to use stuff I was very familiar with, and to apply this familiar knowledge to an unfamiliar situation to try and get to an answer. Now, whilst filling out the SAQ, you may remember putting a list of topics that you've done so far at school. That's including your first year of A-levels and the stuff that you've done so far up until your interview. Now, the interviewers will be aware of this. They will read this. And so the questions they'll ask you will lie within these topics. Of course, that rule is not set. And if they'd like to ask you a question that they think you can work out the answer to, that's above what you've learnt in school so far, they may do. And it's important that you still try and attempt these questions. For questions which involve material that you've never come across, I would suggest that you say that although you haven't come across this topic or concept before, you can still think about it in a certain way. You're just hinting to the interviewer that you've got no past knowledge on this topic, but that you're keen and motivated to try and get to an answer. So what's important to remember is that all these mythical weird and wacky questions that you may have read online, that you may have watched or that you, that you may have seen, they've most likely been follow-on questions from something a person has mentioned before, or from something that the person has mentioned in their personal statement or SAQ. Taken out of context, of course, such questions will sound really weird and odd, but remember, the Cambridge interviewers are here to work through a problem with you. They're here to have a discussion with you. They're here to see how you think. They're not your enemy, they're not trying to catch you out, they're not trying to ruin you and bring you to tears. Of course the Cambridge interview is meant to be intellectually challenging, and the interviews are designed to be like this. And so when you approach interviews, make sure to really know everything you've done so far in school to a sound level, whether that's in maths, chemistry, biology or physics. And remember, physics is only applicable if you're doing physics, but also make sure you're completely comfortable when it comes to talking about any part of your personal statement and SAQ. So I hope this video has been helpful and has helped clear a few doubts that you may have had. And I'd like to thank medify.co.uk for making this video possible. If you found this video helpful, please do drop a like down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to do so. And I wish you the best of luck with any upcoming interviews that you may have. So take care guys, and I'll see you in the next video.